We are recording. All right, welcome everybody. I have the privilege to be with Lauren Beal and Brooke McNamara. And uh, we're gonna talk about their Cultivate Retreat that they are hosting in Cocoon, Portugal, March 14th through the 21st next year in 2020. And um, we've already had one conversation where we got to kind of explore the inspiration and some of your relationship of how you guys came together, um, why this kind of work around creativity and emergence, if I can just use that as an umbrella, is, is important for the world and significant for our times. And, and then we got into some of the experience that people are gonna have and, and some of the benefits. And so um, today I thought we could kind of come at it in a, in a different in a different way, um, just to bring out different qualities and different textures. But um, when when we talk about the cultivate retreat, um, let, let's let's just ask some very simple questions. What is it? And I don't mean that in in like um, just the basic way of it's this many days and it's this you know. But like when we get into the essence of cultivate and what you guys are working on um what is it that you're really up to <laughs> and, and maybe we can start at the kind of the deeper um contours and then move our way towards just like the daily schedule that people might yeah, yeah totally yeah. cool you want to start sure thank you thanks for introducing us and thank you for yeah, being there with you. us um, thanks for listening everybody yeah it's, this is our favorite conversation to have, Lauren and me. And then any conversation with Rob is super juicy too. So we invited him to kind of bring out some of the um, more um, deeper and juicier and more fun layers of what we're up to. <laughs> so what is Cultivate Retreat? I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind with, with the work that we do with people, we just had a, a workshop two days ago and when I feel into like just the core of it, we are um, we are courting creative spirit, huh. and um, and it's that has a lot of <laughs> different um, aspects to it, and a lot of different techniques and methods and practices that have worked for us. But but really, I feel like we get in there and and we are like a attuning and listening so deeply with our whole bodies and our kind of interbeing that we've cultivated over the past 10 years of working together and collaborating. So it's like our own um, instruments we're listening and then our like bigger instrument of the two of us as, as a partnership and an interbeing, we're, we're listening for magic. I mean, I. I know that that can sound a little bit um, childlike and it is, and it's also really um, deep and dark and mysterious and it's, it's life changing. I mean, honestly, we're listening for, for magic, both, you know, subtly and kind of in an ordinary way. It doesn't have to be like these big gigantic explosive new projects or, or insights, but there is magic on, on lots of different levels that comes through people, whether it's, um, the insight that like one participant had an insight that her creative process didn't always have to be about doing the next thing and making the next thing. She could actually completely soften expectations around doing and, and actually just relax into a stream of something bigger. And so that that's part of, cultivate is a relaxation and a resting into something bigger, a bigger intelligence that has way better ideas sometimes than our human minds or egos, or even what we think we want to make to, to look cool or be successful or be approved of. Um, so, so it's a courtship. I, I don't want to say too much right off the bat, but like any courtship, there's like advances toward, <laughs> and then there's like a step back and like, let me, play hard to get or you know let me just soften and 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 become more receptive so it's a dance and and it's a whole bodied embodied 
um, mind, heart, spirit, uh, relational practice that's courting the creative spirits, which can show up in a creative project or a business plan, or like just to, you know, create a new sense of self. Like it really is pretty open for what people think they're moved by and also what's really moving them. You know, we're open. Mm. People just following an impulse, like I feel like I should go to this, but I don't know why, or I want to finish my novel, so I'm bringing that. You know, <laughs> and you can cultivate, you can court the creative spirit and cultivate um, the creative spirit in, in any way, really, mm -hmm. with, a, with our guidance and with the community that's there and the structures that we're going to offer. Yeah. What would you yeah. add to that? Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> that feels enticing. Um, um, I, I think the thing, I love the word courtship. I love that. That feels really... Um, enlivening for me as a word and I, and I also I the thought that came to mind was also just this idea of of carving out and creating particular space and opportunity and I love what you said Brooke about this idea of listening and and, and giving some space to um to how to kind of liberate ourselves from our habitual lives, the things, you know, we're creating all the time. And oftentimes, if we get too fast paced, it seems like we kind of create a lot of patterns and a lot of habits, and then those start creating us and living us. And so what feels so beautiful about the retreat time, a week long retreat in general is really to kind of carve out and to open up this space to, to allow and to kind of work and challenge those habituations and let those fall away so that you can actually listen. And like Brooke was saying, you know, what are you listening for? Just this opportunity to kind of check in well, what, what's really alive? Who am I? What am I doing? What am I offering? What am I most committed to? What am I creating? Because we're doing that on a daily basis anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much about trying to find creative spirit, but like refining how are we participating with this really mm -hmm. boundless creative intelligence that is making all of us and our lives and our stories and our, um, you know, all, all the time. So I really think about it as like a, a space to sort of open up and to decompress some of the stress and the, and the, the, the pressure and the things that sort of the fast pace that just kind of keep us spinning in our day to day familiarity and um, and drop in a little bit deeper, listen to something that might be more of a whisper, something m more true, sort of get to some aliveness and and um, and then invoke some practices that help kind of gather and um, support and um, uh, I love your word that you often use, kind of scaffold new ways of being mm -hmm. in the world um, that might feel more true or more enlivening or more impactful. Mm -hmm. um, so I think about that. About, yeah. Our, uh, like your, I love like the, the boundless river. We, uh, we often start with, the, with this gesture and, and really embodying and, and enacting this gesture at the beginning of any workshop or any retreat of entering the stream. It's like stepping into something that's already coursing always. <laughs> we can't not be coursed through by a creative spirit. So yeah, we're not reaching for it. We're actually gonna like just change the channel and tune a little differently and, and almost ritualistically step into, just say yes and step into the stream. And then, and that requires some relaxation and some shape shifting. And I think it does require suspending life as usual at home. So the gesture of coming on retreat is actually a gesture of entering the stream. Then we'll just do it a little bit more intentionally and full bodily. And, and then um, from there, we usually go into, to, just to give a little bit of idea of the progression of themes, which we always, try to work with what's alive, but usually what's alive is 
after entering the stream, there's a, like some energy gets released and there's a, there's actually a lot of um, energy and playfulness available. So we usually look at play practices that are really um, fun and, and involve some healthy risk taking and some good discomfort um, in terms of like gently <laughs> tiptoeing to our edges and sniffing what's what's beyond like the way that I usually consider Brooke's identity to be what's usually allowed can I go beyond that is that safe and then kind of tiptoeing past maybe and and we have a lot of experience with that and we love that territory of like you know staying within the known and then a little bit beyond it and then maybe jumping way outside of it and there's just a lot of um ideas available out there in that territory that's beyond the what we usually allow in terms of identity and in terms of normal rules that we play by it's like we're going to suspend the normal rules and and create ones that are more exciting and more enlivening mm -hmm. and then with play usually that goes into some shadow territory so we usually pick up shadow like um, shadow play, play, playing beyond what we um, normally shine light on. And then also looking, looking at like the critic, the critic is going to come up. Mm -hmm. The competition in terms of like whose thing that they're making is better or whatever. Um, so we work with competition, critic, mm -hmm. self-judgment. We try to bring that stuff like up and into the process mm -hmm. and include it. Um, and then at a certain point we all of that really does like you said need to we need to work with that um it's kind of a uh it can be a little bit squeezy or a little bit challenging the territory between like ideas and then manifestation so we have a lot of experience and a lot of um things that have worked for us in terms of like this is how I see it but I actually do want to bring it into form I actually want to leave here with a tangible thing uh, or, or, or at least a map. And so that process of like, how to bring the formless into form can be a bit painful or a bit um, intimidating or, or um, there's like certain snares and obstacles along the way, but we also love that. It involves editing, it involves some experience of um, the opposite of creation of, of death. And so we kind of pick up that polarity too of like we're creating, but certain things are gonna have to get thrown away or sacrificed. buried or <laughs> sacrificed. Yeah. Yeah. And then also we, ha we love to work with like, once you have a thing, once you've made a thing and you've brought it from the realm of idea into form, Oh my God, to share that with other people can be so scary and to receive feedback. So we also like to work skillfully, oh passionately. God, yeah. You yeah. want to say anything about that? terrain of like giving and receiving feedback? I mean, sure. I mean, well, you can hear we're really excited <laughs> about what we're going to do, but maybe I'll, I'll pass it back to you, Rob, and see what feels, you know, in conversation with you, what feels um, like what you're hearing. And, and then, yeah, you get us going and we're going to. Feel yeah. free to interrupt us at any point because we'll just start talking about <laughs> Yeah, we love what we do, so it's fun. It's fun to get to talk. Yeah. You, you ended on an interesting d dynamic because, um, well, what I would just say in, in reflection, kind of the metaphysics, like the at the deepest level, what is this? You know, it's, um, I, I like that frame, and you guys both, they're, they're two very interesting um cores that I got and one is kind of this courting of the creative spirit right and and just my own language it's like creative aliveness or mm -hmm. novelty right um, and there is something magical about the emergence of uh, everything really <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, like there wasn't that thing and now there is right and so this this notion of synthesis or the emergence of uh, of something new, innovation, novelty, creativity. So like there's, there's that, um, that's what it is. Like you guys are talking about plugging in and in some ways tuning in to the creative aliveness that's already present mm -hmm. and living us all. Um, and then to your point, Lauren, there's a, um, a, a necessity to create space from the habits, mm -hmm. right? 
the, the rituals that hold your daily kind of your life actual as it already is, right? Mm -hmm. Like if we don't interrupt those and suspend those, then, then there isn't, there isn't the room or the space for that novelty to come forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so like, that's a really interesting um, answer to like, what is this? It's this context, this practice, this embodied interdisciplinary creative practice to use your framing around it that plunges people into um, this space that allows them to unfold, you could say. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really significant. And then the, the, the piece that you were kind of headed into is I started hearing actually we're building a community as well. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's not just Rob's kind of private creative process, but I'm actually going to be required to bring that out and into relationship both with form, whatever it is that I'm, I'm working on or creating mm -hmm. as well as then how do other people relate to both me as the as the author as the generator mm -hmm. as well as the the artifacts that are being kind of created yeah um, yeah for sure and, and what's the kind of community that gets shaped around there i'm hearing is is also part of what this is it's totally a place for dialogue and feedback which i'm assuming kind of uh nurtures and accelerates and kind of fosters emergence itself you know yeah yeah um so uh yeah those are the things that kind of leap out as as really significant um about what it is and and of course um well let me see if you do you want to add anything um i've got a couple other questions i want to ask but yeah well i just want to i just want to piggyback on and affirm what you're saying in terms of how how much we hold relationship and community um sacred inside of this process it's super important inside of this process i mean the thing that the reason and this came in our first conversation that we had um was really how much we have learned and how much our relationship as collaborators has really informed who and what we do and what we and how we want to offer it to the world and the reason that we both keep kind of coming back to collaboration and 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 share and doing this together is precisely because of um how that has impacted what has what has become and what has been possible the way in which we've got to kind of bump up against each other and receive feedback from each other and skillfully skillfully you know learn and cultivate amazing practice within that because that that isn't always super creative that can be super destructive too you know relationship and community and feedback um so to have practices and to have have some tenderness and to have some um, opportunity to work that and you know how are, how are we in relationship with our own self how are we speaking to our how are we communicating within our own selves how are we bumping off and and how do we get to be seen and unseen and sort of offer feedback and know ourselves through another and then how do we offer that into greater complexity within you know, a community of people um, just feels like really good life giving practice for, for, for creativity in and of itself and creative practice, but also human, human practice. <laughs> so yeah, one yeah. of the things, yes to all of that. And, and we, um, our cultivate workshops here are cultivating um, practices for people, but the people that are coming back to the monthly workshops here in Boulder, are starting to develop this um, uh, this sense of community that is so incredibly precious. Yeah, the felt sense of it of like, this is really intimate work. It's it can be scary, it can be really liberating, and it's uh, it can be life changing and life giving. And to do that with other people is so meaningful and intimate and what what i can feel developing here in boulder is really precious to me and um and that's what we want for for portugal too and we keep having this question of like what relationships and art will get made there that 
cannot get made in any other circumstance, in any other place, with any other people, at any other time. So there's something that we're, um, I mean, that's always the case. It's always a unique configuration of the context and the people, but there, we're really putting a lot of intentionality and the space itself has a lot of intentionality in terms of the beauty, the food, it's a farm. The um, landscape. The landscape, yeah. 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 So it's just like everything is kind of there to support a softening and a deepening and a connecting and a, <clears throat> and a um, like kind of rigorous yeah falling into that creative spirit mm -hmm. yeah thank you so you, you mentioned the space so the the cocoon portugal retreat center i i hear is on a beach which i'm pretty excited about it's like a 10 minute bike ride from the beach, from the beach. <laughs> and they have that yes on the farm right it's yeah a farm. it's on a farm yeah it's a really uh, i mean i can't tell you how beautiful um, it looks to be on a farm I and mean, just the diversity of landscape in terms of you have farmland and then you have a beach that's close and um, there's a there's a lake on site that, there's a freshwater lake that you can swim in anytime mm -hmm. there's animals there's yeah, like animals. peacocks and goats and chickens and gardens and mm -hmm. hammocks mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's small enough you know I mean uh, it's about, I think, 14, 14 people. Yeah. That we can only fit 20 people max. 20 we've people. We've already got some of that taken up. So um, in terms of thinking about what Brooke said, I just love that, like, we don't know. And, and who, who, are gonna, who are those 20 people around the world who are going to show up and create something, like you said, Rob, that wasn't there before? And... And who, 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 and what, and how is that going to be? Just is super exciting. Um, and uh, I think the space really lends itself to that in terms of, you know, the vastness and the, um, the smells and the sights and the, and, the, and the different places that you can go and the paths and the little, you know, nooks and crannies and yeah. hammocks and yummy food and... Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. So it, it, seven days kind of immersed in this. Uh, uh, it I get kind of a sense that it's both a crucible and maybe a womb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, the the word cocoon. I love I love the name cocoon because like don't caterpillars go in there and liquefy? Yeah. And then become a butterfly. Yeah, that's it. And, and that's a moth cocoon. I mean, just oh, to be okay. scientifically, it's the chrysalis. <laughs> if it was in chrysalis, it would be a butterfly. But we can transform in any type of um, yeah, crucible internal <laughs> container, woomy thing, woomy container. Yeah, but but yes, it's it's meant to be incredibly restful and restorative and challenging and rigorous. And we we. We really want to play with that polarity too. And even within the schedule for each day, we're teasing those things apart. Like we want to really work and, and, and tiptoe to our edges and beyond. Mm -hmm. And then we really want to give space for rest and, and stargazing and in like guided visualization where we can really drop into the subconscious. Like we're really trying to craft something that supports a, a multi-dimensional kind of transformation transformation in in this um container yeah yeah well so um this kind of my second question is why <laughs> <laughs> you know we're, we're talking about kind of creativity and and novelty and, and emergence and in some sense just the the capacity for innovation and why why is that significant for you know there's 14 people that are thinking about coming mm -hmm. when you think of those kind of hypothetical 14 people why is it relevant for them and and why is it significant for the broader ecosystems that they're a part of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um well my mind and heart definitely goes back to what I w was saying at the beginning in terms of when you bring up the idea of ecosystem and why, why it, is it important? Um, 
I, in one place, place in my heart, just go towards um, uh, the importance of being fully alive when, when we're, uh, you know, unfolding our full and truest selves on this earth seems like a worthy cause in terms of our humanity. And, um, but, but I also think on a, on a greater scale in terms of being of service, like that unfoldment of our own unique humanity, be, how much that is to, to be of service to this greater ecosystem. And I think about, you know, the impending pressures on our earth and our, our, our humanity and with the climate and the, uh, um, and I think it goes back to um, what we were talking about earlier in terms of rivalry. I mean, these things that are like really kind of tearing at the fabric and creating so much stress on the, mm-hmm. on the fabric of, of our lives today. And um, in that sense, it feels particularly urgent and important to, to create these spaces where we can um, ready and ripen ourselves for um, and, and shape shift to greater integrity within our own selves, within our own relationships, within our own ecosystems, with the earth itself. Um, watching and 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 sort of uh, shape shifting what and how and who are we creating and how sustainable is that and what is the impact of our artistry or our creative um, making whether it's the systems the companies the identities the actual art the children the relationships you know what are we creating and how does that you know for generations to come how is that more sustainable and beautiful truth oriented and you know so it it feels particularly urgent on all of those different levels for me yeah totally um it's one of those counterintuitive things where it feels people often say that they feel and i can feel in myself still um even though art making is at the center of my life it, it can feel like an indulgence or like a um a privilege and it is but it's also, um, it feels like a, a necessity and a duty to train this part of ourselves. We don't, this, we don't get that training unless we seek it out on how to like trust and work with these huge currents of life force and innovation and imagination. I never got that training until I really decided that I, that I, wanted it and I sought it out. And so it can feel to make, uh, to make space in our life and time and space feels like a luxury and it is, but it's also completely needed for, for any kind of like, um, you know, truly beneficial idea to come through. I feel like these ideas need us to stop and listen. And I feel, I can really feel that, that there's, there are, you know, if you want to think about it magically or just, or, 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 um, or not, like it feels like there are new ideas that need us to stop what we're doing and actually pay attention and, and just do something different. We need to do something a little different or we're, you know, we might not make it as a species. So there's that like big kind of (laughs) overwhelming perspective, but then also when you ask the question, why, like the, at a very personal level, it just, that question makes me want to cry. Like I can feel the young teenager part of me feeling like so disconnected and, you know, whatever <laughs> problems I had going on with family and friends, feeling so disconnected, but knowing that I had dance class and that I had English class and like that saved my soul. Like truly art making and creativity saved me and then you know that was very angsty and dramatic but I could feel that like art was saving my soul and then that's why I continued to do it and I can feel every time I come back to it it like 
allows a geyser to, to actually um, flow in me, that if that's not flowing, I feel dead. So on a, at a personal level, I've committed to, to paying attention to this geyser and taking care of it. And then I really want to support the geyser and other people because um, it can be the difference between literally feeling alive or feeling dead. And, you know, for however much longer we have in these forms and as a species, I'd love to, to serve that aliveness. Yeah. Yeah, and that, so that's an that's an uh, an important kind of contrast because it's different from emerge, it's different from create, it's different from um, uh, the 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 more typical ways that we think of development as being kind of up and out. Mm -hmm. When the seedling grows, it kind of puts the sprouts through the soil and then kind of branches up towards the sun. And that, that notion of development kind of captures most of our ideas of when we think of growing and developing and innovating, we're usually thinking about up and out. But um, what I hear you kind of presencing is, is a movement down and in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of precisely what ensoulment is. You know, it's, it's you becoming more specifically and more uniquely you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and not because it's nice for that to happen, but it's because that is perhaps your destiny. That is, that is who you are meant to enact, you know, and, and for the world to kind of know and feel and sense into who you are in those, in those contours is very different than I'm creating because this is fun. Yeah. Or I'm creating because this is um, something that's interesting. Or I'm creating because this is something that the world needs out there. Mm -hmm. And um, and while that's an important inquiry, but but this th this inquiry that I get um, when you talk about like English class and dance class saving your soul, <laughs> in a sense, I'm opening the doorways that enabled you to start to step into who you are meant to become you know and that seems to be fairly consistent through through today you know um, yeah yeah and that this gets us to that kind of crucible notion you know of like yeah. um uh, we're not just creating for creativity's sake we're creating for the the, the sake of further ensouling the world mm -hmm. at least that's what i what i kind of feel and sense right? yeah i mean i would say both i would say like there's this amazing paradox i think elizabeth gilbert has it on the back of big magic it's like creativity matters and it doesn't matter at all like there's all these paradoxes and i think my decade of getting to be collaborate collaborative partners with lauren since we met in grad school is that when when we're making work or when we're teaching it, I, I can't wrap my mind around how it's, it is both like the most free fun thing and the most like intensely um, like feels like being in a crucible. Like I'm dying for this. Like, this is not easy. Mm -hmm. I'm giving everything for this. I am asking this piece what it wants and I will give everything. Mm -hmm. Whatever it wants us to do, we will do. You know? <laughs> well, it makes me think of, um, there's a, a documentary on creativity on um, Netflix right now. The title. The Creative Brain. See, she's better with words sometimes. She remembers these things. That's why we have to work together. <laughs> the Creative Brain. I've asked her like 15 times. Um, it's the, not even that hard of a title. It's not, not that hard. The, most the Creative Brain. Anyway, um, there's one quote that has stayed with me o over time and uh, that, that kind of works my uh, works me on all sorts of different levels. And, and one of them is that um, in any given moment, you can either be uh, a critic or a creative. And, um, and, and so there's, there's something about kind of staying inside of this um, kind of at the whim 
or like a victim to our our circumstances and just kind of in, in a in like it, it, like a, in a kind of a crit, criticism of your circumstances internal or external or this sort of really rigorous not always convenient often very much disruptive sort of work ethic of being creative whole like a, as a as a work ethic as a as a wholehearted embodied like world view in terms of being ultimately immediately wholeheartedly whole being body mind spirit available mm -hmm. in each moment to to listen to like let you know let the, the, the contours of other beings in to, to allow yourself to be changed by, to meet and respond with um, different ways of being in any given moment, to, to sort of flow, to assert in one, one moment, to, to round and shape and hold, you know, like to, to be in life as, as, a, as, as a collaborator. As a collaborator. Like and, saying yes and or no and, uh -huh. not but just like, like picking and criticizing all the yeah, time. Yeah, not fixed, not fixed or rigid to to the to the to the surroundings but wholly responsive feels like um no matter what you're creating again, like if you identify as an artist in the world, yay! Like that's <laughs> awesome. If if you're, you know, it, 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 it well I can just get like super meta and big on all of those things, but like how can you how can you take on um, creativity as a way of being, yeah. as a way of living. Yeah. So awesome. that's what I get excited about. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't evident at all in what I know. <laughs> I know. Creative brain and remembering. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, thank you. You know, and and I, I have the privilege of, of getting to spend lots of time with with both of you, and so um, I can just kind of give my endorsement in terms of this um, invitation to step into retreat around this notion of cultivating, both cultivating a sense of creativity and also cultivating a, a deeper sense of ensoulment of uh, kind of bringing forward your own uniqueness as well as using community and context as a mosaic for the broader art beyond the art pieces that we create together you know mm -hmm. and the, i'll just say the folks that are already signed up it's it's like an international crew such great people i i'm so excited to see what kind of sparks between people when yeah. they're there yeah 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 well i'm just to say like you guys are immensely trustable and ingenious and Thanks. so excited for those those other 14 that are going to join uh, mm -hmm. you guys. So um, yeah, the Cultivate Retreat is happening March 14th through the 21st. So you get seven full days with these amazing practitioners and artists yeah. at the Cocoon Por Portugal Retreat Center. And that's next year in 2020. So um, thank you. And our, our early bird prices are available till October 15th. So there's a little bit of urgency around that if you want to get that discount. And then the rest of the registration is open until December 15th. So. Um, and, and if people have questions and they want to have a conversation with you, what's the best way to get, get in touch with you? Is it just to apply on the website or? Yeah, I, I think um, you can go to brookmcnamara.com. Um, and we can include a, a link anytime we send this, post this video. Mm -hmm. But you can you can reach us both through through that, um, and then if you just navigate, you can find your way. It's on the homepage. There's like a little thing about cultivate retreat, and you can find everything through there. But yeah, feel free to ask any, reach out with any questions. We're happy to talk more about it. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for chatting with us. That was fun. Yay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. See you there. See you there. <laughs> <laughs>